So are you ready to PR yourself? We'll remove the mystery from all things PR and we'll discuss everything from our top strategies to tips and tricks and everything that you can utilize to further enhance your brand or your message. I've been in media, I'm a journalist, and I'm also a publicist. I am Leah Frazier, CEO of Think3 Media and your host for PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. Let's go. Thank you guys so much just for being such amazing and faithful listeners to PR Yourself with Leah Frazier and rocking it with us from season one to now season three. We have listeners from all over the world just trying to figure out ways to gain better publicity for their brands and for their businesses. And you guys just make me so, so proud. Keep tagging us on social media. We are sharing it out when you're doing your Instagram reels, when you're getting your media mentions and your press mentions when you're on TV. Keep tagging me in those. Um, Tag our co-host that always comes on, Kiana McDaniel and those Instagram reels and let us celebrate you. But before we get into the episode, I do want to tell you guys that you're going to want to get this free gift. This is my free gift to you for 2021. This is something that I normally charge for. So I want you to head to PRYourselfWithLeahFraser.com forward slash course. And on that page, you're going to find that you have a freebie and it is my how to gain press and media mentions during a crisis. We're still in the middle of a global pandemic and our TV stations, our radio stations, our press and media are still operating in the same mindset that they were last year. So it's still very relevant info, but I want to give that to you for free. You know how I am. I'm all about education. So bring that pen, bring that paper. And I want you guys to jot down all of the little nuggets and put it to use. I want you guys putting yourselves out there and getting the publicity you need for your businesses and brands for 2021. Okay. And pay attention. You're going to want to listen to these episodes. You're going to want to sign up for the email list at PR yourself with LeahFraser.com because I am launching a 14 day pitch it afraid challenge where you will get a video and advice from me, actionable tips for me every single day to build up a plan to where you can pitch, whether it's media, whether it's sponsorships, whether it's collaborations, whatever it is you want to do, you're going to be able to pitch it at the end of that 14 days, okay? And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. So you're going to want to sign up now, or if you have any questions, reach out to me, PR yourself with LeahFraser.com, but you're not going to want to miss the kickoff because this, I just have a feeling so many people are going to be blessed by this and I am excited so thank you guys for tuning in visit pr yourself with leahfraser.com forward slash course get your free gift if you can't get to the web then you can go to the link in my bio on my personal instagram at the leah fraser or on pr yourself podcast on instagram and your free gift is in that link in that bio as well do not miss out on this opportunity I'm so excited. Let's get it for 2021. And now here's the episode. Welcome back to another episode of PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. I have who, Kiana, don't get mad at me, but you guys know each other, so I guess it doesn't matter. My other (laughs) co-host, co-hostess with the mostest, coming back to the show, Cynthia Smoot of Gangway Advertising. Hello. Thank you for having me back. So just in case anybody is new, which I do have new listeners that I'm being made aware of, why don't you let them know who you are? Well, I am a publicist and partner in Gangway Advertising. We are a lifestyle um, full service agency, and we represent what I call the fun stuff, which is restaurants, bars, restaurants, fashion, travel, beauty, all the girly stuff I love to play And I did get your email about True Lux and their Valentine's Day special. (laughs) Yes, I love me some steak and seafood from True Lux, one of my favorite clients. Oh, my God. I always say I love working with restaurants because I I always say I'll never go hungry, right? Like Even if they can't afford to pay me, at least they'll feed me. But then you look at Cynthia, and she's like a <laughs> twig. So it's like, okay, you, you if that were me, it would be very obvious that I've repped restaurants. No, girl, I have gained the COVID-19. <laughs> it's it's is bad. it only 19? Because oh. I'm at like 25. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at 2.0. You know, I'm the, the additional strand that's making its way. I'm afraid I'm... to get on the scales these days. It's just frightening. But you look fab. Thank you. So 
I'm kind of excited today because I wanted to do this earlier, but you know how life is. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about PR trends. Like where is PR going? Cause we thought we we're going to get out of COVID. We're kind of not out of COVID. Can't really be face to face. We're still doing stuff virtually. So I wanted to take this approach of like, where do we see things headed? That way the listeners of small business owners and entrepreneurs can prepare and say, you know, do I need to do more digital? Do I need to have certain technology? Like what, how do they need a prep? Because y'all can't get y'all's acts together and we're in this thing for more months. <laughs> well, I think that's the unfortunate thing is that even though a vaccine has rolled out, it's clear they're having trouble managing and executing the delivery. So who knows when the average American is going to have access to it and what that mm -hmm. means for small business owners and business in general is that um, you really kind of have to act like COVID's here. It's not going anywhere. And so, you know, what can we do in the next 30 days? Um, and I think that that is basically more of the same. So all of this virtual and digital connection that we've been crafting and creating over the last 12 months, mm -hmm. keep doing it. And if you haven't gotten in, I need you to get in <laughs> because people are seeing benefits. So I like that you talked about connections. So let's talk a little bit more about that. You sent me a very interesting article on consumer behavior, which I used to teach that Texas Wesleyan shout out, but consumer behavior, buying patterns and trends for 2021. And one of them had to do with creating more human connection and all of that digitally. Like what, what does that even mean? Well, this article claims that 90% of people in the United States are spending more time on their digital devices. And we knew that, right? I, I totally believe that Me to too. be true, right? So we're exercising, socializing, working, shopping, everything online. And it's mm -hmm. not just Gen Z and millennials. It's everybody. Um, boomers? <laughs> <laughs> the boomers are going kicking and screaming, but they're there, right? So so businesses should be investing in e-commerce and virtual events um, in your online and your social channels because this is how consumers are discovering you and how they're engaging with your brands and business. And so I think, you know, social media is an obvious mm -hmm. connector. Um, but I think, you know, you and I have been exploring new platforms like Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I've been spending more time on LinkedIn. So um, Hi, <laughs> and I honestly, let me just give you your shout out. It's working because I see it comes on my feed. I'll do the little clap, whatever reaction. And I'm like, go Cynthia. Well, listen, it's working when I start getting yeah! calls yes! from, from new clients. Oh That's God. how I'll know it's working. So oh. <laughs> you, know, you got to put in the work. You got to plant the, the seeds work. before you get the flowers. But I see. That's all that matters. I'm trying. And so it's reaching the feeds. So more well, LinkedIn. Yes. Well, and I think it depends on your business too, right? So you may have to play around a little bit to figure out which of these platforms are best for you to network in. So I might really enjoy Facebook as a user, but that might not be the best platform for me for my business. It might be right. LinkedIn or it might be Instagram. So I think you kind of have to, the first thing to do is to separate what do I like personally? And then where are my customers? Yeah, I learned a cool tip the other day. Um, I forgot where I learned it, probably some online webinar. And so th I think that's something too, that's been going on. I've been doing a lot of online education. But um, I found a way and maybe you already knew this. So I feel really stupid in saying this. But like, even on your personal Facebook, like you can create a list. So I threw out this question so that I could get all of my business owners kind of chiming in. And then I took all of their profiles and put them in a list so that when I'm just doing the PR stuff or the podcast stuff, like I'm not irritating the hell out of everybody else. Your family. Right. But that they only see that one thing because they're essentially like, this is my target audience. This is my customer. This is my listener. And I've put them on this list now. So it's kind of like I have a LinkedIn within Facebook now. So I can't just say, well, Facebook doesn't have my audience. I've now created this list that says business, whatever. And I can only shoot that post to them, which I was like, how did I not know about this before? <laughs> this is amazing. There's and it's working. Good. They all see it. Well, I hope you have me on that list because I like to know what you're doing. Okay, well, I'll add you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Which, by the way, Cynthia is very supportive. She'll shoot me back. She'll reply back to my email and be like, oh, man, this is really cool. So shout out to Cynthia. Okay, so more human connection, digital. Now, are you... Do you see your clients creating more content because of this too? So are they having to up their social media strategy? Um, and if you could put a percentage on it, like by how much? What are we talking about here? Well, I think all of our clients had a social media strategy in place before COVID. <clears throat> I think what has changed is the way that we're utilizing it. We're encouraging a lot more video um, to really, again, create that connection because you can just relay so much more emotion and education and just get a lot more content in, right? Even in, within a 60-second video than you can with just a flat image and some copy. So it's just, again, really sort of trying to um, enhance that connection, that human interaction as much as possible. We're also encouraging our clients to do a lot more live video, whether mm -hmm. that's Facebook Live or an Instagram story. Um, again, you're, it allows people to react immediately um, and to really engage. So, you know, it's almost like me walking into your store. I can then you know, talk to you if you're walking around showing me like, hey, we just got a box in today. I wanted to show you guys what we're unpacking. And I can literally pop on there and be like, oh, my gosh, that's the cutest. Do you have it in a size eight? You know, so it's 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 the next best thing to having me walk into the store because maybe I can't mm -hmm. or maybe I'm just busy doing something else. And you just made a sale that you wouldn't have made had I not been seeing this. Um, so I just I think that's what we're encouraging more of is how can you stimulate this engagement? How can you try to recreate that human connection as close as possible online? Yeah, I think that's really cool. You said that. And I think if Kiana was here, she'd just clap because she she's seeing so much success doing that on her Instagram reels where she literally just has her model there. And she's like, this fits like this. And before you know it, people are like, oh, do you have that in a medium? Where can I find that? She directs them to the website. Boom, done. But it's all video. It's visual. People feel like they can kind of touch and feel it but it's obviously virtual but I agree with you on that I think from my standpoint too like I've just encouraged a lot of clients to think outside the box I'm like okay we're in this age now when we talk about human connection of yeah people want to see you visually and you may have more success interacting on an Instagram reel with your product or whatever you have not Instagram reel but IG live or a live stream versus maybe booking a segment at least you get to talk back to your customer or, you know, like there's all these different ways that you can interact online. Let's go outside of our traditional media box and see other ways that we can interact online. Well, I think if I had to pick one word to be my motto for 2021, it would be pivot. Mm -hmm. Or another good word is flexibility. Ooh, I like that one, Cynthia. And I think that you have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone. Um, and you have to be reactionary because tomorrow could bring some new something with COVID, with the pandemic. And I think we saw that in 2020, especially I know working with restaurants, right? So, you know, it was totally shut down. Then they could open at 25%, then 50, then they could do curbside. Then it went to 75, then it went back down to 50. I mean, so you had to be able to pivot to stay afloat. And so not only being able to pivot, but also having a plan in place for how are we going to communicate mm. um, this sort of crisis management? How are we going to navigate these rapid changes to our audience? And I think that goes back to social media. It also goes back to having a publicist or having a PR plan um, so that you're communicating this through traditional media sources, through your social media, you have to be able to react and you need to be able to pivot quickly to stay afloat. And I love how you said that because sometimes it's just going to be, you just kind of have to lean in. <laughs> You're just going to have to try it out. And you well, know, what's the alternative? Exactly. I mean, I, I don't think I told you this. I think I mentioned it in a prior episode, but I, I've had friends that have gone into Clubhouse and they're just like, hey, what do we have to lose? You know, and they've gone in there. Some are in the business realm. You know, we talked about the millionaire rooms and all that other stuff. 
but there's just like these pool of people there that are just hungry. And so I've had friends sell $15,000 worth of programs. And another one was she made 160 K in a day. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's just like, what in the hell? And it's all off of audio because they get in there, they run these rooms, they build trust. Um, Again, it's that human emotional connection, but via voice. So there's probably a lot of people listening who are not on Clubhouse, or maybe you don't even know what Clubhouse is because it is my prior episodes. It is fairly (laughs) new. But what I told somebody the other day who asked me, they're like, what is this Clubhouse thing you're talking about? (laughs) And I said, it's basically like an audio version of LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But it allows you to, it's like a virtual business chat room. And what I like about it is one of my favorite shows is The Voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like it because the premise of The Voice is the judges are turned around, they're facing backwards, and they can't see the performer. And so they're judging solely based on their voice, not on anything visual. Right. And that's what I like about Clubhouse is mm. that it's really pure <clears throat> in the sense that you're basing your feeling um or your the energy in the room based on what that person is saying not what they look like um it's it's just strictly like the sound of their voice and what's coming out of their mouth and i feel like it's a really pure form of which is another reason i like podcast mm-hmm. um because it really when you close your eyes or you're doing you know you're just listening you're really honing in on what people are saying and you're not distracted by anything else you know what's been fun to see on Clubhouse because we're talking about it just being all audio just for like from a PR perspective is that part of my French but you have people that are deep down assholes and it is coming out to where people are like I thought your brand was this and the things that are coming out of your mouth in these rooms is actually this and they are not having it they are shutting some people down and I'm like oh they need publicists more than ever like training these people on what to say what not to say because they're damaging their entire brands because their communication is just terrible and their personalities are coming out well you know it's easy to look good on instagram right Mm -hmm. throw a few filters on there light and bright and shave off stand by somebody else's maserati (laughs) Mm -hmm. right i mean so it's easy to create this image that may or may not be true um And but that again, that's one of the things that I like about Clubhouse is when you get somebody talking for a period of time, you can only BS for so long. Um, And nine times out of 10, they get too comfortable and they show you who they really are, right? Mm hmm. So, word to the wise. (laughs) All right, Cynthia. So, what other trends are we seeing for 2021? Well, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about was value-based spending. I think COVID-19 and also the Black Lives Matter movement has really increased value-based spending. You know, people want to purchase goods and service locally, um, perhaps from Black-owned businesses. But but really, I think what this has shown us is that people want to buy with brands that align with their values. Mm -hmm. And that could be you know, LGBTQ plus, um, it could be black owned, it could be just shopping local. Um, But I think now more than ever, what we're seeing is that um, people are becoming woke to a lot of different things. um, And that's all great for small businesses. And so Mm -hmm. there really has never been a better time to be a small business, whether you're, you know, woman owned, minority owned, um, just local owned, it's it's a great time to plug in to those communities and to incorporate that into your marketing messaging. I love that you said that because before it it wasn't, I mean, you would put it out on front street like, Oh, Hey, local base, blah, blah, blah. But now whether it's in the, the subject title or it's right in that first paragraph, or maybe it's the headline on the press release. Like I make it known because I know of that fact, like, from a coverage perspective, someone is more apt to probably cover this black owned business because they're maybe they've carved out new segments for this, or there's a whole column now in the newspaper for these businesses because of the movement. And so I I've had a lot of people that before was like, Oh, well, I'm just a business. I don't want a label. Listen, (laughs) you better take these views. I, I understand it. But um, in terms of just maximizing your exposure and, and at a time where, you know, 
you really need to have, you know, target your audience and do it strategically, I would say do it. Well, listen, ultimately, it's going to come down to are you providing something of value? Right. And so you can only play that card for so long. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have something of quality to offer, you're going to be short lived. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. I don't care what minority you are. I don't care where your store is. I mean, ultimately, you're going to have to be, you know, that may be a foot in the door, but you're going to have to provide something of service to have any kind of longevity. And I I have a really interesting example, right? So in Dallas, there's been a lot of hubbub about a new um, national chain that came into our market called Eataly. It just opened recently at North Park Center. Everywhere. Everywhere. Everybody's talking about Eataly. Everybody's so excited about it. And it was pretty great. I'm not going to lie. I went. I enjoyed it. I shopped around. I ate at the restaurant. It was fabulous. I was excited about it. And then a couple of weeks after the opening, I saw a post on Facebook from Jimmy's Food Store, which is a little local Italian-owned food store. I have been at Jimmy's. Oh, it's been around for forever. Jimmy's. And Jimmy's was basically saying, you know, calling people out like all these people that are like, you know, raising the roof for Italy. We've been here for 30 years. If you're such a fan of this, you know, and they were basically saying shop local, support small business. We've been here. And I was, you know, uh, they were right. And they're in my neighborhood. And I was like, why am I driving all the way to Italy when I should be supporting small business or at least doing both? Right. Because I don't want to villainize larger chains either. Mm -hmm. Like, I love me some Barnes and Noble. (laughs) I shop at Tom Thumb. I mean, yeah, I'm all about a national chain. They have their place. But I think, you know, what's important to me is to remember that small businesses are really what give every community their flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, They're what make neighborhoods um, what they are. Right. They really sort of enhance the diversity and the the you know again the flavor the the ambiance of of neighborhoods and cities and so they're such an important and integral part of our community um that it's just i think it's important to sort of have a balance and to strive for that how did i miss that and i love jimmy's amazing a little kiddo going in there, like picking out meatballs and, and stuff like that. Just but to so your, good. To your point, I think that there are a lot of people right now who are like, oh, I don't know if I want to play into that Black Lives Matter thing or that, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if I want to play the LGBTQ card. Like, I just want to, ha- I just have, have a good business. business. Why do I have to be woman owned? And But listen, you know? what I would say from a PR standpoint, bringing it back to the whole purpose of this podcast mm-hmm. is, you know, I always say to people, listen, my job as a, a publicist is to look for all the angles. There you go. And one of the angles is that you are a woman in business. One of the angles is that you are a black woman in business. Mm-hmm. Another angle is that you are in PR and marketing. So, you know, you've got a lifestyle angle. You've got a business angle. You've got a minority so angle. You've got. So it's not about that. That's what we're going to make you and now now that's your identity and it's just one it's just one million other things it's just another card in the deck that as a publicist we can look for angles to plug you into different topics and different stories you may be launching a service and we want to get that service out to as many people as possible i'm going to look you know if i'm approaching a business publication Mm -hmm. i'm going to put more of a business spin on it if Mm -hmm. i'm putting if i'm submitting it to a lifestyle publication we're going to play up the lifestyle angle a little, little bit more. Ultimately, the message is the message. It's just what's what is the icing we're putting on the cake? Yeah, I love that you said that because there was a lady. I was in a clubhouse room. I was trying to explain that to her. And I was like, so there's all these different buckets. And she was so just focused on, no, I am a such and such leader. And she was just focused on the career part. And I'm like, yeah, but you may be a mom. You may be this. You may, you know, like you said, female owned, black owned, da 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 da. So now you've taken one aspect of yourself or your whole self and you've created all these different buckets to maximize your coverage versus only going after this one career thing and leaving everybody out. Like, why would you do that? But people don't get it. So I'm glad you said it. That's why they hire us, Leah. Yeah. And there's nothing, I don't think there's anything bad about it um about playing into um cause-driven marketing i i i want to spend 
hundreds of dollars knowing that it's going to a good cause or that it's going to someone that supports something that I support in. So I just think smaller businesses need to, as we go back to content creation, making sure that you create content that showcases those values and, and not just posting on social media without any intention. Exactly. So I think, you know, I would encourage people to be that leader for change. Um, and it's more than words, right? People want to see action. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are you doing to, you know, support these causes, be a part of them, um, sell, you know, have a diversified brand portfolio. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, people are into that. And even if it's, you know, even if it's, it doesn't have to be something political or cultural, even it can be charitable, right? So I think, um, one of my clients is Tiffany Moon, who is a new cast member for the Real Housewives of Dallas. And she's using her platform to raise money for causes that she loves and supports. So she has a whole line of candles and face masks and proceeds from those are going to the family place, which um, supports victims of domestic violence. And so, you know, that's a plug in for her. That's her cause marketing is it's not even about her. It's about she wants to use her platform to shine a light on the nonprofits that she supports. And so I think as a business, you know, if you like if, if you don't have anything in particular that you can plug into, then how can you support nonprofits or, you know, schools, um, something in your neighborhood or your organization to plug into your community and become a part of it? Yeah, especially during a time like this, like people want things that are inspiring and uplifting. And, and it, you know, I have a client that for every face mask case sold he gives some to kids you know at school that just throw their mask around and it gets all sorts of germs we're not even gonna go there but hearing something like that and knowing that there's kids in the community community that probably have parents that can't afford to keep replacing masks or things like that it just kind of makes you feel good that your dollars are going towards something good just like you were saying so and oh by the way tell tiffany i would eat the chicken foot <laughs> you know and you always you have to watch real housewives of dallas to know what i'm talking about I would come over and, and I would eat whatever cultural stuff she would put on the table. I would eat the chicken foot. I have to be honest. I don't know if I would. I, <laughs> it looked like it was sweet and sour and glazed. I, now, I don't think I would put it in a bowl and s use my foot to slide it under the table like Cameron did. But I, I love Cameron. <laughs> But I don't know if I could eat it either. I do, however, love I do, however, love me some dumplings. So I do too. So, all right. So, is there anything, any other trends that you're thinking are just major, major for PR in 2021? I don't know if it's major, but you know, one of the things we've talked about before is, um, and again, I think it goes to stepping outside of your comfort zone is understanding that PR in 2021 is not always about traditional media. And I think it's broadening those horizons to include influencers even more to look at networking in places like LinkedIn and Clubhouse. Um, I, it, it's really just expanding your reach and realizing that PR doesn't necessarily mean a TV segment. It can mean that you're, you know, plugging into your local PTA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. There is, um, especially in terms of influencer marketing, and then even just thinking beyond like traditional social media influencers, it could be a community leader, or it could be, you know, well, that's why listen, I always say whoever the president of the PTA is at your local elementary <laughs> school, they could not even be on social media. And I'm like, you need to be friends with that woman. Cause she's gonna, she, she has fifty, a hundred other moms. They've got influence. Are, <laughs> exactly. They, she's running things. Um, that I think that's a whole other episode too to talk about just where influencer marketing is headed. Um, because even on Clubhouse, it's funny to watch how this new app, how so many people are trying to be influencers and bring over their blue checks from Instagram <laughs> into Clubhouse, where it's like. There is no blue check or verification here, but um, it, it's funny how people define influencer. But I think to me, influencer is that PTA mom, or maybe it's that person that comes to your store faithfully and is constantly buying from you where it's natural for them to talk about your product or your food or the restaurant to their friends that are online. 
Well, and I feel like, you know, your the the purpose of this podcast is that it's targeted at smaller to mid sized businesses, right? People mm-hmm. that maybe can't necessarily afford to hire a publicist or want to understand it better. And so, you know, for those people, um, you know, if you're not looking to sell to the world, you're looking to sell to those in your backyard. It's really about nurturing those relationships Mm -hmm. within a three to five mile radius of your business. Like that's where you should start and then branch it out to Dallas, then branch it out to DFW, then branch it out to Texas, then branch it out. You know, it's like start small. Don't open your doors and think like I'm going to sell worldwide and make, you know, $20 million. It's like you have to lay a foundation. And so I always say, you know, the people in your backyard are going to be your most likely champions. They want to support their neighbors. They want to support small businesses in their community. It's the easiest place to get media is going to be in your hometown Mm -hmm. for those reasons, Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to reaching out to a TV station halfway across the country. America, really? (laughs) Well, and those (laughs) those national channels are are probably not apt to pay attention to you unless you have created some local media and you can show them like this is what I've done locally, and there's you know so they can be like okay, well this is you know this is interesting, and we see how you are on camera, and we feel it's newsworthy. Well, I love all of these tips. We don't want to oversaturate people because this is enough to just kind of marinate. So if we're just kind of recapping, the word for the day is flexibility. So that's whether you're going to do more videos, more content, more live streaming, more audio, clubhouse, And you know what, Leah? The great thing thing about digital marketing Mm -hmm. is that if you post something and you don't love it, you can always delete it. So you really don't have anything to lose. Like do a quick little Instagram live. And then if you're like, I didn't like the way that went, just don't save it. Yeah. And I found, I finally figured out how, if you did a Facebook live, how to save that down or download it. So then you can throw it up on YouTube and Instagram and repurpose. And look, I like to do things one time. I'm not one of those people that try to do it two, three, four times. Well, listen, like anything in life, you're never going to do, you're never going to be perfect the first time. Right. And practice makes perfect. So you just have to try it. And I think that's really part of the, the charm of these video digital applications that people don't expect you to be perfect. That's, that's what makes it real. Mm-hmm. So it's okay to mess up or to flub a line or maybe your hair is not, you know. I don't be out here just saying any of that and somebody screenshot it and then, yeah, you deleted it. But it's still out there floating into the, you know, into space. <laughs> be smart about it. Otherwise, you need to go hire Cynthia. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So then there's that. And then number two, maybe figure out all those buckets that you possibly could fall into as your PRing yourself. So are you a woman bait? Are you a black owned business? Are you woman owned, you know, minority, like LGBTQ plus thanks for that, Cynthia, (laughs) or wherever you fall into where you can then PR yourself in all those different areas. Just don't limit yourself. Tie into a cause, get involved in the community, even if it's virtually. And what was the last one? We had one more. (laughs) Value, well, you, know, you just talked about Oh, it. just creating commu- human connections yes. online. So create, create, create. Um, tap in the clubhouse. Several episodes on that. YouTube video. It's like an hour long. I'll link it in the caption. But um, is there anything else, Cynthia? I think we gave them enough. I think that's to enough for today. Because if I gave you everything, then you wouldn't have me back. I know. Well, you are a fan favorite, I must say. Thank you. <laughs> I get a lot of compliments on Cynthia. So we're going to have to have Cynthia back. But how can people follow you, connect with you, and learn more about Gangway? You can follow us on all social platforms at Gangway ADV for Gangway Advertising. That's G-A-N-G-W-A-Y. ADV. Um, and you can follow me personally at Oso oh Cynthia. O H S O Cynthia. And Cynthia is amazing. She's just very entertaining. That's all I can say. Thank you. Just follow her. She has fabulous friends and fabulous outfits. So, <laughs> not these days. And fabulous clients. <laughs> and you guys know what to do because, like I said, Cynthia is a favorite. So just let me know how much you love the episode. Subscribe, tell all your friends, share, 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 and rate this episode. And if you have any questions, you can reach out Leah at Think3Media. 
www.thepodcastnetwork.com. But until next time.